bat and the end of everything. Chapter 10, the last day of third grade. But Mr. Grayson didn't sort it out. I'm sorry, Bat, he said when Bat came in from recess, but I've already offered baby cakes to Jenny. I'm sure her parents will say no if it isn't a good fit. Bat spent most of that day and the next hoping that Jenny's parents would have more sense than Jenny. But on Friday morning, Jenny announced, My mom's going to pick me up this afternoon. She's bringing the big car, so there will be room in the back for baby cakes and her stuff. Bat's eyes filled with hot tears. Israel leaned over and said something, but Bat did not want to talk to Israel. And because it was the last day of the school year, nothing happened in its usual order. There was no math time, no reading time, or any of that. There were games and a pizza party at lunch, and then all the kids signed each other's yearbooks, which was really just a notebook Mr. Grayson had made for them with pictures of the things the class had done that year. Bat spent yearbook signing time sitting with baby cakes. The bunny chewed contently and unremarkably on her hay, completely oblivious to the giant change that was about to occur. Mr. Grayson came over to Bat and Baby Cakes. You seem worried, my friend, he said to Bat. I am worried, Bat said. Mr. Grayson sighed. Bat, he said, do you know how old Baby Cakes is? Bat had never really thought about it. Baby Cakes was full grown. Bat knew that much. Angora rabbits live between 7 and 12 years, so she must have been somewhere between 2, since she was already full grown when Bat had met her last September, and 12, since she was still alive. But other than that, he really didn't know. 3, Bat guessed? Wow, Mr. Grayson said. That's pretty good. Yep, she's about 3 and a half years old. I got baby cakes when she was a young bunny when I first got this job at the Saw Wet School. And this is my third year here. You've taught third grade for three years and you have a three-year-old pet class, class pet, Bat said. Mr. Grayson laughed. I guess so. Anyway, Bat, do you know what that means? Bat didn't. It means that this will be the third summer that Baby Cakes will be going home with a student. And come September, it'll be Baby Cakes' fourth fall at Saul Wet School and in my classroom. Next year... Bat would be in fourth grade. Mr. Grayson wouldn't be his teacher anymore. Bat had, hadn't really thought about that. He looked over at Mr. Grayson. He saw his orange high top tennis shoes and the funny way Mr. Grayson folded his jeans at the bottoms. Pegged, he called them. He saw that Mr. Grayson was wearing two silver rings on his left hand and a brass ring on his right hand. He saw that Mr. Grayson must be trying to grow a mustache, something he'd done twice before that year, but with not very much success. And Bat realized how much he was going to miss his teacher, maybe even as much as he would miss baby cakes. I think I'd like to be in third grade again next year, Bat said. Mr. Grayson smiled. I'm going to miss you too, Bat, he said, but you'll be in the room right next door with Mrs. Amani, and you can come visit me and baby cakes as much as you want. What if I want to visit you and Baby Cakes every day? Then you can come every day, Mr. Grayson said. Baby Cakes had finished eating her hay. She hopped around, her cute little nose twitching, like she was looking for something. I'm worried that Jenny's cat will hurt Baby Cakes, Bat said, or maybe scare her. I know, Mr. Grayson said. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to give Jenny's mom your mom's phone number, okay? And I'll tell her if there's any sign that it isn't going to work at their house, that they should call you and let you know. And then you can help figure out a backup plan, okay? It wasn't perfect, but it was better than nothing. Okay, Bat said. Mr. Grayson reached out his hand and Bat took it. Mr. Grayson pulled him up to, to standing. Come on now, he said. Let's go get some signatures on that yearbook of yours. It was an every other Friday, which meant that when the last day of school was officially over, Dad was waiting for Bat in the parking lot. Hi, sport, he said, leaning over to unlock the passenger door. Hi, Bat said, pushing forward the front seat and sliding it behind him into the narrow back seat. He didn't like it when a Dad called him sport, but today he had bigger things to worry about. Dad looked at him. You don't seem happy for a kid on the last day of school, he said. That's because I wish it wasn't the last day of school, Bat said. Dad laughed. 
I don't think in all my years of school, college years included, I would ever say those words. He turned back around and steered the car towards the school's exit. They drove past Jenny's mom's car, where Mr. Grayson was helping load Baby Cake's stuff into the trunk. Jenny was standing nearby, holding Baby Cakes in her travel case. As they drove past, Bat's dad waved to Mr. Grayson, who waved back. Have a great summer, Bat, Mr. Grayson called. And then they were out of the parking lot and down the road. And that was the end of third grade. Chapter 11, Pizza Night. Maybe Bat wasn't happy about the school year being over, but Janie was. Bat and Dad picked her up from outside her school, where she stood surrounded by a big circle of friends. They were all laughing and hugging, and then Janie took a bunch of pictures of everyone with her camera. And Bat had to wait an extra five minutes for Janie to finish saying goodbye. By the time Janie had finally slid into the front seat, slinging her full backpack into the rear seat with Bat, he was almost twitchy with anger. You shouldn't make us wait like that. Bat's words came out loudly, and it felt good, like it, like finally letting go of a sneeze held in for too long. Geez, Bat, you don't need to yell at me, Janie said. She buckled her seatbelt. It's the last day of school. I was just saying goodbye to my friends. It's not like you won't get to see them anymore, Bat said. It's not like they're going to Canada. Then Bat realized he hadn't said goodbye to Israel, who was going to Canada, and Bat wouldn't see him for weeks. Okay, all right, Dad said. He turned on his blinker, looked over his shoulder, then pulled into traffic. Everybody calm down. Bat didn't want to calm down. His body felt hot and twitchy and uncomfortable, and the seatbelt pressed on his collarbone like it was going to choke him. Dad's window was rolled partway down, and the sound of the wind coming into the car was so, so loud. Bat put his hands over his ears and rocked forward and back. So, Dad said loudly, we're going to go out to dinner tonight to celebrate the end of the school year. Great, said Janie. Can we get pizza? Actually, Dad said, we're going to go somewhere a little fancier, and a friend of mine is going to meet us there. A friend, said Janie. What friend? Please roll up your window, Bat said, but Dad didn't. Maybe he didn't hear Dad. A new friend, Dad said. You haven't met her before. Her, Janie asked. Roll up your window, yelled Bat. Dad rolled up his window. All right, sport, you don't have to yell, he said to Bat. And then he turned to Janie and said, yes, my friend is a her. But they didn't go out to pizza or anywhere. I have a terrible headache, Janie said as soon as they got home to Dad's apartment. I'm going to take a nap. She went into the bedroom and closed the door. Later, when it was time to get ready to leave, Janie said, I still don't feel good. You'll be fine, Dad said, and he was wearing a new bl shirt, blue and black, blue and brown plaid, and he'd even taken off his usual baseball cap. His hair, Bat thought, looked kind of stiff. I'm not going, Janie said. But we're going to a restaurant, Bat said. You love restaurants. You'll have to go without me, Janie said. And she went back to her into her room and closed the door loudly. Dad tried to convince Janie to get up and get ready. He asked nicely. He even tried to make a deal. He even yelled a little bit. But nothing Dad said could convince Janie to get out of bed. She just laid there with her pillow over her head, saying nothing. Bat watched from the kitchen, feeling unsettled. He couldn't stop remember, to remember Janie ever complaining of a headache bad enough to stop her from going out to eat. Do we need to call a doctor? Bat asked. No, Dad said. Finally, Dad gave up. He sighed and pinched the top of his nose, like maybe he had a headache now, too. Then he went back into the living room sat on the couch and made two phone calls. The first was to his new friend. Hi, he said. It's me. I'm sorry, but tonight isn't going to work after all. Janie doesn't feel very well. Okay, well, we'll do it another time. He hung up. He grabbed his baseball cap from the coffee table and pulled it back on. Now he looked more like Dad. Then he made his second call. Hello, he said. Delivery, please. I'd like a large pizza. Half cheese, half pepperoni. Breadsticks. Bat said, breadsticks were Janie's favorite. And breadsticks, 
Dad said into the phone. Chapter 12, Donuts for Breakfast. In the morning, Janie's headache was all gone and she felt good enough to ride bikes into town for donuts. Bat loved riding bikes. He loved the special bike pads, the way they had broken yellow line painted right on down the center so that the bikes going one way were on one side of the path and bikes going the other were on the other side of the path, just like they were cars driving on the road. He loved how the crosswalks made a friendly chirping sound to let you know that there, it was your turn to go across the street. He loved going across the little bridge and he loved parking his bike in the rack downtown, stringing the chain between the spokes of the wheel and clicking the lock into place. Janie and dad loved riding bikes too. It was something all three of them liked to do together. The whole world seemed to be in a good mood. The birds chirping in the trees, other bicyclists who smiled and dinged their bells to say hello. The motorists who were polite at crosswalks, leaving plenty of room so that Bat felt safe while he crossed. The dogs with waggy tails, one on, on one end of their leashes and the people walking in them on the other. There was a bright, big, a big bright blue sky and no clouds at all. Even the wispy ones. Maybe Bat thought as he chained up his bike and spun the numbers on the lock, summer would be okay after all. Dad smiled as he held open the door to the donut shop, the doorbell tinkling as they entered. Bat followed Janie inside, thinking about which kind of donut he would choose today. Maybe a tiger's tail, because he liked the name so much, or a bear claw. He headed straight for the glass case to look at his choices. Suzette, his dad said, you're here already. Bat looked away from the donuts to, and to a lady sitting at one of the tables, holding a cup of coffee. She stood up when she saw them, and she smiled widely, smiled a, smiled a wide, friendly smile at them. You must be Janie and Bat, she said, holding out her hand. I'm Suzette. It's so nice to meet you. Janie just stood there even though she was usually the first person to say hello and do polite things like handshaking. Bat looked back and forth between Janie and the lady's outstretched hand, waiting to see what would happen. Janie, Bat, Dad said, this is my friend Suzette. Say hello. Hello, Bat said. And then, because Suzette was still holding her hand out, Bat shook it. Your fingers are warm, he said. Suzette smiled. That's because I was just holding my cup of coffee. You didn't tell me your friend was going to be here, Janie said to Dad. Janie, don't be rude, Dad said in a rude voice. Janie crossed her arms. I don't think I want any donuts after all, she said. I'm going to wait outside by the bikes. And then she turned and left, shoving hard on the door so the little friendly bell clanged loudly. Bat didn't know what to do. He never seen Janie be rude to a grown-up before. Maybe he heard her head was hurting again. I'm so sorry about that, Dad said to Suzette. I don't know what's gotten into her. She's usually so polite. Didn't you tell her I was going to be here, Suzette asked. That was something Bat did know. No, he told her. He didn't. Oh, Calvin, Suzette said, and she shook her head. Can I still have a donut, Bat asked. Dad ignored him. I should have told them you were meeting us here, he said to Suzette. I thought it might be easier this way. Easier for you, Suzette said, not easier for Janie. Maybe her headache is back, Bat said. Suzette rubbed her forehead like maybe she had a headache too. Then Bat started to worry that something was going around and that maybe he could catch it as well. I think I'll wait outside with Janie, he said. Dad, will you please get me a bear claw? Sure, sport, Dad said. Bat turned toward the door. Behind him, he said, Behind him, he heard Suzette say, For such a smart guy, Calvin, sometimes you do some pretty unsmart things. Hearing Suzette call Dad by his first name gave Bat an uncomfortable feeling in his stomach. Maybe he was getting sick, too.